centuries before planes, trains and merchant ships brought our world closer together, the Silk Road was the lifeblood of international trade. A trade route connecting China to Europe since 200 BC, the Silk Road was travelled by merchants of all nationalities in search of treasures, riches and life-changing adventure. My name is Graham Langford and in this series we're on an epic journey of discovery along the Chinese section of the Silk Road. Starting out in the ancient capital of Xi'an and finishing in the extraordinary Islamic city of Kashgar, we'll be exploring how the Silk Road shaped the places and the lives of the people in this part of the world. Our journey will take us through scorching deserts, soaring mountains, bustling cities and awe-inspiring ancient monuments, whilst all the while hearing the incredible stories of those people who make the region one of the most fascinatingly diverse places on the planet. Welcome to the Chinese Silk Road. The Gobi Desert. Some of the harshest terrain for any merchant travelling on the Silk Road to cross. After endless days of travelling through the scorched land on camels, the exhausted eyes of pilgrims would fall thankfully onto the welcome sight of the Crescent Spring Oasis. In Chinese legend, this is reputed to be the first spring under the sun, and great tales emerged of the fabled powers of what lay beneath the surface of the lake. This spring is known amongst the Chinese as the medicinal spring, because it is rumoured that inside there is a special plant called the seven star grass, and a special fish called the iron back fish. And if you eat both of these things, you will live forever. But it wasn't just the promise of immortality that brought curious travellers here for centuries. With a set of peaceful temples and a traditional pagoda lying on its shores, the spring also became a place of Buddhist pilgrimage, with thousands of pilgrims still coming here every year. One of the most interesting stories surrounding the spring is the ancient folktale of how it came to be. Chinese legend says that many years ago, all of the dunes here were mountains, and in these mountains lived demons. One day, a demigod named Zhang Guolao was traveling through here with his donkey. On the sides of his donkey, he had two large bags of sand the purpose of which was to protect them from the demons in this area. However, on their travels they met a very mischievous young boy who proceeded to open the bags of sand on the side of the donkey. The donkey became very startled and ran all over the area, the sand pouring from his bags. The sand proceeded to cover the mountains in the area and the donkey's hard stomp on the floor created the crescent lake behind. The sand covered the mountains entirely and kept the demons here locked away for eternity. On a windy day in this area, it is said that you can still hear the howls and the cries of those imprisoned demons. Regardless of its origins, the spring survival in the center of the desert is nothing short of miraculous. This site would have been an extremely welcome pit stop for any Silk Road traveller. A place where they could rest, quench their thirst, 
or even fish for immortality if they were feeling lucky. Having spent all day battling through the dunes on foot, I decided that a change of tact was in order to take us to our next destination of Urumqi. It was time for the camels. Okay, so now it's time to go. Wotwa Da Wulumchi Kayizolama Kaye. But of course, the camels weren't really going to take us all the way. Instead, it was the turn of a real classic of Chinese travel. The sleeper train. Crisscrossing the nation, Chinese sleeper trains are a popular and cheap way to get around the country, with some passengers riding the rails for up to three nights in one journey. For us, it's just a one night trip in our cramped, yet cosy accommodation. In the morning, we awoke to find ourselves in the city of Urumqi, the capital of Western China's Xinjiang province. Urumqi is a city that grew alongside the Silk Road, developing from a mere tax collection point in the early days of the trade route into the major hub it is today. With a population dominated by the Uyghur ethnicity, who even speak their own Arabic-like language, Urumqi is a city that feels distinctly less Chinese, and a place that truly embodies the spirit of the Silk Road. Urumqi is a city that is bursting with culture and colour, and nowhere is that more true than right here, the city's Grand Bazaar. Grand Bazaar is absolutely overflowing with treasures and treats of the Silk Road, with everything from exotic fruits, cloths, jewellery and musical instruments lining the stalls. Music is something that plays a large part in Xinjiang life, so we stopped off at a local music store to find out a little bit more. Atbolarımızın <gülüyor> Ulam yakışkırdı bu ne? Şiktar uduttu, temurun çelişini yakışkırdı. Ulam ümün işini yakışkırdı, ben ulan ümütüp koymaya asan. Duttarın yakışkırdı, ulan duttan çamak asan, şiktarlık bakan iken, ulan yakışkırdı. Craft of these instruments requires a lot of patience and careful attention to detail. The craftsmen spend large parts of their day carving the intricate patterns that you can see on the outside. The scale of their job becomes quite clear when you see the variety of instruments on show. Ma dutarna kosuk çong oldu, şiktarlık oldu. Ma o simtarlık oldu, beştarlık oldu. Ma uzun oldu nişte. Ma satarneyan on üç taras oldu. Bunu kamalcıda tatu çaldı. Traditionally, these instruments would be played together in large groups at festivals and celebrations around the region. Today, however, having only himself to perform, the master was keen to show off his favourite, the sitar.
anything that was traded in history along the Silk Road can still be found in the Urumqi Bazaar today. One of the most valuable and famously traded commodities has a particularly large presence in Xinjiang. Woolen carpets. Almost every home in Xinjiang will have a carpet of this kind, making it one of the greatest cultural symbols of the local area. Yangpi, a Xinjiang de Yangpi, a thing Nanhuo, Whilst the yak's tail is no doubt useful for cleaning, it's probably not something you're going to find in Western homes anytime soon. Our time in Urumqi was now coming to a close. A fascinatingly diverse city, it had been a great respite from the heat and exhaustion of the desert. But it was now time to get back out there and continue our journey deeper into Western China. Next time on the Chinese Silk Road. Traders and farmers have come from all over the province, bringing almost any kind of livestock imaginable. Welcome to the Kashgar cattle market. The centuries old buildings and the twisted, winding, cobbled streets really give this place a unique and almost timeless feel.